Hey, it's Jim. Today we're looking at a kind of crazy scooter that I've seen some other reviews for, and I'm just going to give you my look at it. Uh, this is going to be mostly just a look through kind of the features, and I'm going to have an assistant do some real performance-based stuff because this is a performance-oriented scooter. This is the 72-volt Bronco Extreme 11, 11 Plus I've seen sometimes, Bronco Extreme 11. Uh, I got this from Free Motion. I purchased this scooter it's actually going to go to the person that's going to help me with the second review but i want to just jump in here show you some features that really are really interesting because this is a expensive scooter 41.99 is the msrp so you know you know what you're getting into if you're buying this you're buying something that's got a whole bunch of performance and it does have it has some interesting stuff let's look at it so first off when you look at the bronco 11 extreme is the size of the deck it's just massive it's 12 inches wide by 20 and a half inches long so while being very wide it is not ultra long and my heels tend to be right up against that kind of brace plate in the rear now, the scooter as you see is how it comes from free motion they included this bag it comes with a kind of piddly 1.75 amp main charger for 20 hours of recharge time and then also came with the fast charger that is five amps and gives you a more reasonable seven hour charge time. You got a huge amount of battery in this deck. You got 72 volts at 35 amp hours. So it's like 2,500 watt hours, a lot of capacity. Um, but one of the big thing with this, this particular scooter is the 8,400 peak watts of output on these dual motors. So you're getting over 4,000 watts of output per motor. And so it's just a beast with advertised top speeds of 70 miles per hour and ranges advertised at 80 miles. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. Comes with the steering damper. Um, pretty nice burly wide clamp, uh, though, though there still is some movement in that stem that I just can't seem to get rid of. You have to put on the damper. Uh, the instructions weren't great for that, but I was able to get it on there without too much problems. You got a nice adjustable air spring suspension in the front. And you can see there you got four deck headlights that uh, you know do an okay job lighting your path. It's, it's a little deficient in the lighting uh, arena in my mind. Got a nice amount of branding. Oh, everything looks pretty good, you know. Coming around to the back, you got nut hydraulic disc brakes with 160 millimeter rotors they feel real good and they do a good job stopping it uh, my braking data will be posted on a secondary video you got an adjustable shock here in the rear also air spring shock um, and it came with a pump to change the pressure in that to your liking you also got four tail lights uh, two of them work when the brake is uh, depressed the other two light up when the lights are turned on Speaking of lights, they are turned on by this button here on the handlebar. Real simple and easy to get to while you're riding. Sort of an interesting kickstand on the Bronco. It does seem like it does a good job holding the scooter up. It doesn't seem terribly robust compared to some of these other scooters. Uh, advertised weight of the scooter is a little over 105 pounds. I measured it at a little over 104 pounds, so a little lighter than advertised. They did use some cable uh, man braiding around the cables. This stuff's quite inexpensive and you can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's really your preference if you think this cleans up the look or not. I'm not sure uh, that I necessarily like it. It kind of looks like a bunch of tentacles coming out here. Also some branding down on the very beefy front mechanism. Just everything is solid as we'll talk about a little bit more. We got two charge ports here on the side. This deck is not only massive, it is tall. So we got a foot off the ground here. It looks like more because it's at this angle. And I think it was eight inches of clearance. I'll correct that if that is not correct. Again, you got the back, back rim. And just take note that these are 11 inch tube tires and there are, these rims do separate. So your tire changes may not be the worst thing in the world. It's just a very basic display. Uh, eco mode turbo pad I'm just call I just made a name for it this I'm calling this a turbo pad <laughs> it's, it's it's very common it's just okay um, but I do like it's pretty clean 
There's a lot of space on the handlebar here for putting your stuff. These handlebars are a little over 27 inches wide, so really wide handlebars. Using this ecstasy style of folding bars, which a little hard to do one-handed here. Folds down like that, real sturdy bar. Um, you know, they're not the most expensive bar option, but they do work quite well. Of course, those nut hydraulic brakes with the adjustable reach levers feel quite good. They have good, they just, they do feel good. This is the latch that comes out and hooks into the folding mechanism right here in the, the little brace wing, whatever you want to call that. Um, and it's a very simple style. You just undo the two clasps, pull this up, fold it down. It's also, it's a heavy scooter, so you're not, you know, going to be flinging it around, but you can lift it around. Um, advertised range, 80 miles. Um, with these higher voltage scooters, you kind of tend to reach an asymptote um, where your voltage and your watt hungry motors start to cancel each other out. You, you can only fit so much battery in one of these scooters. So in theory, if you're riding this at any sort of speed, I, you're probably going to be probably in the 30 mile of range if you're pretty lucky. Uh, reality, maybe if you tone it down and you're under 20 miles per hour, maybe 40, uh, you know, these, these motors tend to want to suck some power. So, you know, you're kind of sacrificing all out speed for range in some ways. So I want to quickly show you some things I think are really surprisingly good and some of the things I think are surprisingly not good. First surprisingly good, the coverage on these fenders. Thank you. Finally, somebody's got some good coverage fenders. Now they aren't. There's one attachment point and I went in some grass and this thing starts to hit the tire. So coverage good, maybe construction of the fender bad. Uh, fasteners some actual stainless steel looking fasteners, bigger than usual rotor bolts, nice stainless looking fasteners all over. Everything was really nice and tight. Fasteners on this scooter, I think are definitely upgrade of over some of the other scooters I've seen. Real nice rear brace set up in here. Just seems very beefy. Again, good coverage on this fender as well on the rear. On the bad side, I think it's really the slip-on grips that just don't stay on worth a dang. And uh, it's kind of this same style of clamp and bar situation. I don't know how well you can see it here, but you just get flex in this situation. There's almost just no way it's, it's too small. It's a single stem. You just do get some flex. If you're a bigger rider, you're going to be more aware of that than, than I am per se. The other kind of like scratch my head moment is the display. Like I, I feel like for the price point you're paying, I, I would I'd kind of expect stuff a little bit nicer up here, especially where this is kind of where you're joined to the scooter. And that stock 1.75 amp charger. I'm glad that they just include the 5 amp charger with it. I'm not sure if that's what they always do, but they really should. Lights. There's no light up, like a lot of, a lot of scooters in this price range have a really nice big light somewhere along here that you can actually aim. These deck lights just aren't doing it at this price point. And then um, it comes with a very small bell horn that just you attach to the handlebars. I mean, the Wolf Warrior has this motorcycle horn that just makes people want to like jump out of your way. So I think, I think this needs to have a better bell. Okay, you can hear that fender right there. So I think that front suspension probably needs some adjustment for my weight. Um, but that fender is a little... I, I don't think it's going to be staying on there very long. It's got great coverage, but I just don't think it's very sturdy. So here's how it looks when you're standing on the scooter, of course. You, know, you get that nice clamp there. It's everything is. You can make this a little tighter. There's a couple of grub screws in here. There's the smallest amount of movement in this side. Um, but the throttle has a, a pretty nice feel, and I've heard that on some other videos. I do have to say that. Um, even though you got tons of power, it's it's pretty easy to to tap into it without like feeling real jerky, even at the stock settings. But you know, we're, I'm just maneuvering around here so you can just kind of see it's actually whoop, pretty easy to maneuver. With these 11 inch tires, you can roll over some stuff pretty decently. 
The scooter feels good. Pretty much everything in turbo mode, all the speed limits are going to get you well over 20 miles per hour. And eco mode gets you under 17 miles per hour, irregardless of how many, what motor setting is or whatever you're in. It's that kind of glitchy nature of some of these displays. Um, that steering damper definitely seems to help at, at 30 miles per hour, which I don't really ride above. I didn't fi feel any speed wobble or any even a tendency to speed wobble. wobble. The motors are very quiet. Uh, you know, a lot of the mini mo uh, dual trons have a little bit of hum to them. Uh, the Cabos have a growl, and this is kind of like some of the Zero line and the V-Set line where they're just real, just silent. I mean, it's definitely slower handling than some real compact scooters, but it handles pretty, I, I think it handles very well. I mean, the, the, speed, the speed that you can get to 30 miles per hour on this scooter is, even in single motor mode, it's insane. Like, oh gosh. So, whew. I, I gotta, I gotta admit, the scooter kind of scares me. It scares me a little bit. I feel like I kind of have a little bit of a death grip on the handlebars. And then adding to my, the scariness is these awful grips. These grips suck. Like the fact that I can just move my hands around while you're trying to hold on for dear life on this thing. So. All right, so it's got that goofy thing in eco mode where all three speed limits are the same. Let's see, it does that way in dual. Okay, so you just get a little more torque. Yep, speeds are the same. This is eco, dual motor, speed limit three. I gotta be honest, I think that is just goofy. So you have a scooter that will go 70 miles per hour, but in eco mode, you can't go over 17. So you have to be, if you're gonna ride above 17, which 17 miles per hour, if you wanna maximize your range is probably a good spot to be. Um, but if you're wanting to really unlock the reason you probably bought this scooter, you're gonna wanna be in turbo. And then at that point, you're, you know, you're going to have to do some P-setting adjustment potentially to, to, to get this guy under control. Let's see if we actually get some, I'm, we're in turbo single motor mode. I'm just kind of curious, do we get some variation between the limits? Twenty-five. Uh, these nut brake let brakes feel quite good. Um, you know, not maybe quite as refined as like a Magura, but pretty smooth response, a little smoother than like the Zoom hydraulics for sure. So we're in speed limit two. I'm going to see what we got here, see if it's a little faster. Oh yeah. Okay. So in turbo mode, you get some real differences between the speed limit settings. All right, thanks for being here looking at the uh, Bronco 11 Extreme. I'm going to have a second video with more performance related stuff and some fast footage, fast riding footage that's not going to be me. So, um, having questions or comments with this, it's a beast. It's fast, but it also has a pretty nice ride quality to it. It has some places where you kind of scratch your head a little bit for the amount of money you spent, but then from a performance standpoint, it's just wild. And, and build, is real fantastic. The stem is the one thing that I'm just a little bit uh, lukewarm on, I guess you'd say. So thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe, hit the bells, do all the things like that. And I'm going to get out of the way and show you this Bronco Extreme one more time. Got my little transformer on the deck.